How many has ever had him bless and food for you? Let's sing us, of course, our children's ministry can be this his children's church. doing fine. Somehow or another my science has got all stopped up or something. Now I've got my head fire. You got shook got me all teared eyed or something. But that's okay. That's okay. We'll we'll get through it. I bleed for I bleed when the anointing down you can preach in the library. Yes sir. Pray so if the anointing's in it. If the anointing's not in it, I don't need to about hearing it anyway. Amen. So, uh, I don't these doctors have got all these degrees Looks like a thermometer, and that's good, that's fine, but if they're not anointed, I just ain't going back to college. And uh, I don't know here. Praise God. Just give me an old country boy, just, or country girl, or city boy, or city girl that's anointed, and just just let them preach to me. And don't let them pull no punches. Let them, let them tell me how dirty my whole life is, if it's, if it's dirty. Let them, let them preach to me the truth. And get me in an altar, get me prayed through to the Holy Ghost. That's what we need tonight. Acts 19, chapter 1. Enjoy that, Brother Carver. Joy, enjoy the sun. God be a great God. Everybody, praise the Lord. Amen. And it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and found certain disciples. Come, come to find out they were John's disciples. Found certain disciples, and he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not heard so much, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that he is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Why don't people see that? Right. Come on, man. Why can people not see that? It's so that's right. You know, somebody preached a message. Well, it's a message that I was studying for and I had never got it together. I've been studying it for it for years. And I just can't somehow or another I can't get the go ahead on it. The ignorant of the experts. Or or the stupidity of the of the of the stupid. And uh, that's why they can't see it. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about to Praise the Lord. God give me a little, little wind here from these sciences. I'm going to talk or preach about what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Ghost. What does it mean to be filled? We preach about being filled, but what does it mean to be filled? Thank you, Jesus. That's okay. You don't have to. Just lift your hands and ask God to anoint tonight. Would you do that with me, Father, in the name of Jesus? God, I want to thank you, Lord, tonight for this beautiful presence, God, that you have sent our way. Lord, you've been here. You're here with us. God, we want to thank you, Lord. And uh, we ask God that you bless. God, touch your children tonight. Let us be filled with your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Clap your hands as you're being seated. Thank you so much. Paul came to Ephesus. 
found some of John's disciples that, that was followers of John. Now, when, if, you, if you look at the city of Ephesus, it was a thriving city. And it was a very proud city. It was proud of its education. It was proud of its prosperity. And even proud of the idolatry. It was that type of city. The great temple of Diana was there and it was kind of like a show place of that city. It was kind of, it kind of draw attention to everyone that came into the city. And uh, that's why I say they were proud of their idolatry. And it was taught, it was a tough place. Uh, so I can understand myself, it would, would have been a mighty tough place to start up a church to try to build a church for Jesus Christ. It was a hard, it was hard, it is hard and it was hard to, and even in our day, it's hard to convince the crowd that the crowd of the, of the know-it-all uh, that they need God. I told Bobby Pilkington years ago, I, I done some welding, I, was, I had a welding rig and I used to well for Mr. Jack Crutcher, a big farmer. Uh, he's passed away now. Uh, he was a big farmer in Henny. Sister Sue, you probably knew him. And uh, I, I'd done a lot of repair work for him on his disc and so forth. And, and so, and I was talking to Bobby Pilkington, which was his foreman. And I told Brother Bobby, I said, you know, it's hard. It's hard to convince a man like Jack Crutcher that's got probably enough money to buy most of me, or could have bought me for sure, uh, that if he would give his life to God, God would bless him. And so one Monday morning he called and said, Preacher, what are you doing today? And I said, well, I don't have a lot going on. What do you need? He said, I got every disc I got broke down Sunday. And uh, so I said, well, okay, I'll be on over shortly. So I loaded up the truck. My wife on the way out, she told me, she said, Tell Mr. Crutcher if he'll start paying the preacher. Now, now, she didn't mean paying me for my work. She meant putting money in the church is what, what the, that saying is. Paying the preacher said he'll quit having breakdowns on Sunday. So I told him. And he said, Preacher said, you tell Miss Creasy if she'll figure up what I owe. I will gladly pay it if it'll stop these breakdowns. <laughs> Sometimes, as I said, it's hard to tell know-it-alls what they need from God. Amen. It's hard to convince people sometimes. So Paul asked the question. He just hauls off and just comes in and asks them and says, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you? He didn't deny their believing. He didn't, he didn't deny what they had. He didn't try to tell them they were bad people. He just said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They were believers. And they, matter of fact, they were John's, John's disciples. John had baptized them. And, and he had baptized them unto repentance. He did not baptize, I don't believe, I can't find it in Scripture, and, and it, it, it doesn't matter if I read it in a commentary, because that's just his opinion. Right. And I could write that commentary and put my opinion in there. Right. And I do not believe he baptized them using the word Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right. He baptized them using the words, I baptize you unto repentance. Yes. And he baptized them in water. And Paul said, Under what then? They said, We don't we haven't heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. And I, in Paul's mind, I think Paul was saying, Well, let's examine your walk with God. Right. Let's see what's going on in your life. If you've not heard the, that there be a Holy Ghost, and he said, Under what then were you baptized? And they said, We were baptized under John's baptism. He said, John only baptized with the baptism, or said John baptized with the baptism of repentance. Uh -huh pointing you to the one that was coming after him, which was Christ Jesus. And Paul laid his hands, or baptized him in the name of the Lord, laid his hands on him, and they received the Holy Ghost. Yes, I mean, just right off the bat. If you ever need, if we ever need a burning Holy Ghost filled church, if we ever need, need have needed a burning Holy Ghost filled preacher. Come on, come on. We need it in this generation. We do not need another building taking up two or three acres of ground. We need a heart felt the need this this Holy Ghost message. Preachers need to burn you 
like a cutting torch. Preacher, what was my friend? Preacher McLean up there, Preacher Tam Bowie, wherever he's at, and Preacher McCarver, and Preacher Creasy, and Preacher Crumb, and, and, and Pastor Creasy. This Holy Ghost message needs to burn us like Jeremiah said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones and I cannot shut my mouth. God preachers ought to be so plugged up to the Holy Ghost that we can't shut up. Because we need a church burning literally on fire with the power of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. We're not wrestling flesh and blood, ladies and gentlemen, sweetheart, guys, gals, whatever you want to call yourself. We're not wrestling flesh and blood. We're fighting the very principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. That apostle said, you better take the whole armor of God that ye might be able to withstand in this evil hour. If the hour gets any worse than it is tonight, I pity us. We've got to be filled yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. with the Holy Ghost. Yes. When you're filled, yes. if you took a glass of water yes, Lord. and you filled it to the brim uh -huh. Uh -huh. and set it right there, yes, Lord. I'm talking about full yes, sir. Yes, sir. and took an ice cube. Uh -huh. yeah. You walked over there and you dropped that ice cube Come on. into that glass of water that was filled, it would overflow. Yes, sir. Right. Because you cannot put anything or put any, anything in a container if it's filled That's right. That's right. without it flowing over. Right. Right, if we're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's no room for any junk. Not if you're filled with it. Because when we're full of the Holy Ghost, yeah. nothing can stay in that, in that, in this container, Amen. in this temple. This generation is desperate for the filling of the Holy Ghost. Yes. We we are desperately in need for the Holy Ghost to direct us and motivate us and lead us. We have to be led yes, by the Spirit. Yes, For as many as are led by the Spirit, uh -huh. they are the sons of God. Right. Even to them that call on His name. Right. So we have to be led, filled, uh -huh. motivated, yes, directed yes. by the Spirit of God. Yes, they said, we've not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Have you been baptized? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you were baptized? Or since you believed? They said, we, not, we don't know anything about the Holy Ghost. Then Paul said unto them, what, how, or what were, how were you baptized? To me, Paul is signifying that you connect believing and baptizing together. And they said unto John's baptism, when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, if we're full of the Holy Ghost, it gives us power to pray. You're going to want to pray when you're full of the Holy Ghost. Any praying, when, when, when you're praying as you're full of the Holy Ghost, listen carefully to me tonight. You have access to the very heart of God. When you're full of of the Holy Ghost. It gives you that want to. To pray. The real. Impact of a church. Of the apostolic church. That's the only church. I'm interested in. One preacher called. Actually it's supposed to be pronounced. Apostolic. But us old country boys. We, we kind of broke it down. Called it apostolic. The apostolic church is not that the effects of it is not determined or the power of the church the effects of the church 
the impact that this church right here that you're sitting in tonight, the impact of this church in this community, Tippin County, is not based upon the political influence of the bill of the church. It is not based upon its large membership or its large offerings, but it's based upon being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's got nothing to do with our money. It's got nothing to do with the size of the membership. It's got everything to do with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If, I could, if we could go back and, and look in the church record books and we could pull out every name that's been put down as someone gave an offering or someone was baptized uh, somewhere, we got, got that wrote down somewhere. Uh, 36 years ago, almost back somewhere in one of them books. I'm almost positive it's there. Give, me, give us about six months and we can find it. I almost, I almost know it's that. I could pull all those names up and Lord only knows the size building it would take to see them. The Lord only knows. Not even nowhere close would they ever get in this building. Largest crowd we ever had was somewhere I think around 400 when Brother Herring was here laying courts. That wouldn't scratch the surface. But that's got nothing to do with the impact of this church in this community. People come in those doors. You listen carefully to me, lay members. When people come in those doors, they're coming to an apostolic church and they know it. They know the United Pentecostal Organization. They know what we stand for. We didn't start in here last week. We've been in here. I know we've been here 36 years and plus because Brother Jones was here several years. This area, this community knows this is a one God, Jesus name, baptizing, apostolic, Holy Ghost field church. That's the impact this church will have on sinners and on your family and on your cousins and your aunts and your uncles. That's the event, not the size of the membership or the political influence that it has. It's got nothing to do with the attack your preacher has. Because trust me, I thought tack when God said was what the hell the rug down with. I didn't know that's what I was supposed to have. And so it's got nothing to do with it. And when they had prayed at 431, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they was assembled together and they were all filled. Everybody say filled. With the Holy Ghost. And spake the word of God with boldness. God's Spirit, the Holy Ghost, gives you boldness. Somebody called it holy boldness. It gives you boldness to speak the truth in this wicked time. Can anybody relate with what I'm saying? This is a wicked time. We need preachers, churches, who will speak the word of God with boldness. Not in a smart alley way, not in a crude way, not, not in a not in a, a way to, to, to run people away. I heard one preacher say when his church got too big, or heard, heard that he said it, he didn't say it to me. I'm, I'm thankful because me and him would probably have some words. Uh, said when his church got a little too big, he just got up and run about half of them off. I said, well, he's an idiot. I, you know, I can run people off. We're not, we're not called to run people off. We're called to bring people in. And, and if we, we need a moving of the Spirit of God. Preachers, we need preachers in this generation that will speak the truth in love. Love people, but tell them the truth. Don't love them to hell. Love them to heaven. Oh, Doyle, Doyle Crocs. Oh, retired UPC preacher attended church with me in Savannah, Joy, you know him. 
He, he told me, he said, Brother Creasy, you can build a church from a hospital. He said, because people are needing somebody to come and talk with them and visit with them. People need the truth, but they need it in love. They need to be told, you got to be baptized in the name of of Jesus Christ. No other name, Acts 4, 12, given unto heaven among men whereby you must be saved. You can't be saved any other way. Especially after you've heard it. You might be ignorant, as ignorant as anybody, as a dumb and a sack of rocks. You may have never heard it. Then that may, you may be excusable. But when you, you ain't sat here very long if you ain't heard it. Because I preach it Brother Mark preaches it. Brother Crom preaches it. And dear God, my wife screams it. Because <laughs> I, I believe it. That's what the big guy said. Well, I'm going to sing it again because I still believe it. Stan Cook said. Are you hearing me? We need it priest, but we need it priest in love. We are in danger in this generation. Listen to this. Listen to me. We're in danger of turning out a generation of smiling preachers skilled in the art of almost saying something. Almost saying something. Almost preaching a message. We're in danger of turning out preachers that are mama called and papa said. I told a lady, uh, her, her name is Debbie Elliott. Some of you all know her. She's just a school bus driver. I told her the other day, she talked about preaching. I said, let me tell you something about preaching. It ain't a job. She looked at me, she said, what do you mean? I said, it's a calling. This church didn't hire me. Y'all voted. The ones that was here that you guys weren't here, some of you were. I was voted into this church. I was not hired in, and you ain't going to fire me. You can't fire somebody that never was hired. All right? We need a baptizing yes, in the Holy Ghost. Yes, I don't want to be danger or be uh, accused or guilty. That's the word I'm trying to find. I don't want to be guilty of almost preaching a sermon. All right. All right. All right. I don't want to be guilty. Brother Mark, don't you ever almost preach. Amen. Right. Don't you ever almost preach. Right. Right. You're going to preach Preach. You ain't sit down and shut up. That's right. And give me that microphone. Can't all vote. Got to say something. Got something I got to say. Black sister stood up, up on, Lee, on, on uh, Canal Street or Leaf Street in Memphis. And, and church, small building, couldn't have got one row of these pews in there. And she stood up, man. The Holy Ghost came down. And she said, I got on my running shoes for Jesus. Yes. I got a message to carry and I ain't got time to tell. Are you hearing me? What this world needs is preachers filled with the Holy Ghost. We need the ministry to pray through. We need ministers to pray through tonight and get the fire of God let it touch our heart again. But we can't sit still. Right. Jeremiah said, he got discouraged and said, I'm not preaching no more in that name. But the Spirit of God moved and he said it began to be a fire like a fire shut up in my bone. And I could not stay. We need preachers that's on fire for God. Deacon boards. If you got one, trustee board. We'll use that. We got a trustee board. Trustees need to get saved. Pray through. It's more than signing a, a note down to bank. You are a representative of the United Pentecostal Church of Covington. Deacons, you represent a Sunday school teacher. You get out there on that street dressed like a, a little hooker. You're representing your church. We need, a, we need a baptize it in the Sunday school department. We need a baptize it in the youth department. We, I'm going to tell you what teenagers need. Teenagers need to pray through. If they'll get prayed through, get the Holy Ghost, all this backbiting and getting jealous and getting upset because somebody said this and somebody said that. All oh, that'll be gone. That's what I'm talking about. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. Singers. 
You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Piano players, guitar thumpers, yes, bass rollers, drum beaters, everybody, everybody needs to be full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, if you walk on this platform, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Right. If you come in doors back there, you need to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. The early church uh, felt uh, 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 a stinging, a, a burning when, when they would come together, together, and their hearts were touched. You know what it was? Conviction. Yes, sir. Lord, sometimes... Well, I'm going to ask. Y'all want me to say it? Y'all know what I'm going to say it. I went to a church one time, an apostolic church, and uh, got lost getting there. Was on vacation. Got lost. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, yeah, we go on vacation. We go to church. And... Uh, Got lost up them mountains, man. I felt like a grizzly bear or something. I couldn't find. Finally, we found the church. Fine. It was about ten minutes to eleven, or something of that sort. Quarter to eleven, something. Walked in the foyer, and there was a young man sitting. I think he was the Sunday school superintendent. He was sitting there on a pew, a little short, like a deacon pew. You know, you see. Sitting there, and I said, uh, "Is uh, Sunday school about over?" He said, "Yes, sir." He said, "There'll be." be uh, dismissed the Sunday school in just a minute. And so we just kind of, you know, held up. We didn't want to interrupt the service. So, And so finally we eased on. He kind of, the pastor was coming. He was teaching the Bible. He wasn't using a quarterly. He was using the book of the Bible. And so finally we eased and sat down. And of course he, he didn't know us, I guess. And uh, not that that mattered. But uh, so he got to a certain place in his scriptures. And he said, well, he said, now, now right here, he said, uh, the writer changes uh, uh, changes his uh, his uh, what, what he's talking about. I can't remember what the word he used now. Uh, he said, so I'm going to stop right here. He said, because I don't have time to go all the way through what he's bringing out, which I understood that. He said, so we're going to pick up right here next time. I said, oh, man, we're going to have church. And he closed his Bible and said, say, everybody stand. So we stood and he started announcing, making an announcement for that night. And, and uh, just missed the service. And I was never so disappointed in all my life. I thought, did I, get in, did, did I read that sign wrong? Is this not an apostolic church? How come this man ain't going to preach to me? I mean, I'm six or seven hours from God's country. I need a word of God. Are oh, you understand? I think somebody needs to open that book and do some preaching. I was wishing he'd let me preach. If, he can, if he's not going to, let me have it. We don't need shorter sermons. We need a baptizer in the Holy Ghost is what we need. We, we, the Holy Ghost brings conviction. No wonder we can't get sinners prayed through. If we don't preach enough to have conviction, you can't talk Conviction. The Bible said the Holy Ghost are you ready? Is sent down. It ain't worked up. You don't work up with emotion. It comes down from heaven. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. They cried out, what must we do to be saved? People stood. Sinners would grip the backs of the pews and the backs of the benches till their knuckles would turn white. Altars would fill with people hungry to be free from sin in this generation. If this generation is going to be reached, if some of your children and some of my children or my grandchildren are going to be reached for God, we're going to have to have a filling of the Holy Ghost. We cannot just bring them in here Y'all come in this pool of water, let them go down a dry center and come up a wet center and get the job done. It will not happen. It's got to be under the convicted. It's got to be, we've got to be hungry from, to be set free from sin. If we are going to reach our generation, let me tell you something. I am crazy. I'm nuttier than a fruitcake. I know that. I understand that. I'm crazy. I cut up a lot. 
if you don't like that, that's just tough. I'm not changing. I'm too old to change. You can't teach me how to preach. I, I got this. But let me tell you something. If we're going to reach this generation, we cannot do it by let, letting them sign a church book and just be a part of the crowd. Just kind of get lost in the crowd. If we're going to save this generation, we're going to have to reach them through the power of the Holy Ghost. It makes a difference. I'm going to say it again. It makes a difference. Somebody told me here a few months ago, Bert Jim said, asked me, said, what kind of church you pastor? I said, I pastor the United Pentecostal Church. He said, oh, that's the same thing to send me God. I said, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. He said, well, what's the difference? I said, I appreciate you asking that question. So I told him the difference. I said, I told him everything I could think of. Man, I told him everything about the Jesus name church. And he just stood there and looked at me and he said, okay. And he left. It makes a difference what you believe. You can't just believe any old thing. You can't just believe that you fat meat's not greasy. You can't believe that you got to believe the truth. Jesus said the word of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. How it said, what is truth? Jesus said, you're talking to it. I'm the truth, Christ said. We got to preach Jesus' name so hard, devils will tremble. We need to preach it so hard, so straight, Brother Mark. Those next couple of series you have coming up, preach it with love. I know you will. I know you always do. Preach it so straight. Preach it straight as a gun barrel. Right, right, right. Jesus name, baptism. Yes, yes. Holy Ghost, feel. Yes, yes. You can't partially get the Holy Ghost no, no how. No, no. That's like if you ain't saved to some degree, you might be lost to some extent. That's crazy. Be filled. There's only one message, folks, and that's Jesus Christ. When we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we have the power to pray for the sick. When we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we can bleed for the impossible. When we're filled, it is simply not possible for a rag to transmit healing to a body. There's nothing to that rag. Just a rag, just a, a handkerchief that I've been slobbering on. <laughs> it's impossible. But my Bible says they took handkerchiefs from Paul's body. Am I right? And took it and put it on sick people. And they were healed. What? What's the difference? It's called the power of the Holy Ghost. You, that right there got nothing. It's just stained up. It's all in. It's nothing. But you take that right there and you put some anointing oil on that thing. And you took one to surgery with you, pinned on your body. I, there's others. I've told people that we use these little prayer claws. I said, when you go, I think it was you I was talking to. I told them, I said, don't you let them take that off of you. You have that right. Leave it on you. No power in it. But it was put there by Holy Ghost filled men and women of God. That makes the difference. Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, a Holy Ghost filled church, watch this, has the power to believe God for healing. Yes, yes. Are you ready? Or it has the power to trust God when God withholds the healing. All right. That's a Holy Ghost filled right. church. Yes. The Holy Ghost keeps us shouting the victory. Yes, it does. The Holy Ghost gives us power over demonic forces. Yes, it does. If ever a generation needed a Holy Ghost church. This one does. Let me read you something from the book of Romans, the apostle wrote. Paul's writer. Paul's the writer. Romans 1, 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
Verse 27, it says, Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. In the 20th century, this 20th century crowd does not, listen carefully, does not need new methods. We need a new baptizer in the Spirit. We don't need negative It's okay if you got one. It sounds pretty good. I'd like to pass the 5,000 for a couple days. That'd be probably about all I'd say. That ain't, that ain't what we need. We don't need, we really don't even need a big counseling session. We need a baptizer. We need, this crowd needs deliverance. We need set some deliverance. We need people to get this. These are old figures I'm fixing to give you. I'm going to give you some figures. They're old figures. They're much greater now. Much greater. I took these several years ago. Uh, today, this, like I said, this was taken several years ago, so it's much greater. We have 17 million homosexuals. 20 million alcoholics. 40 million problem drinkers. We have a drug that will dull the senses and induce sleep. There's $8.10 billion per year spent on pornography. The world is trying to figure out Doctors and, and shrinks are trying to figure out what happened in little Johnny's life, a, a childhood that made him addicted to drugs. Right. They're trying to figure out what made little Johnny think he was a girl. Right. Or little Susie think she was a boy. They're trying to figure out. And instead of our governments trying to help, they're pushing it further. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just telling you the truth. They're making bathrooms down where man or woman can go to the same bathroom. They're not trying to help this matter. They're hurting this matter. They're causing problems. Oh, I'd like to preach about Elijah and Ahab. Ahab said, you're troubled Israel. And Elijah said, you're an idiot. You're the one that's troubling Israel. Yes. They, they keep hollering about the church. The church is doing this. The church is causing problems. The church is preaching hate, hate messages. The, per, the church don't like me. That's, that's a lie right out of hell. Right. It ain't us that's troubling them. That's right. It's them that's troubling them. Right. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The world is trying to figure it all out. What the world needs is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, let's go back. Let's go back just a page or two here and talk about that group again. That group that Paul said uh, changed the natural use of the man and changed the natural use of the woman. Burning in their own lust. Leaving the natural use. Men with men. Women with women working that which is unseemly. The 17 million homosexuals, the 20 million alcoholics, the 40 million problem drinkers, the 8.10 million dollars spent on pornography. Let's don't listen carefully to me. Don't write them off. Right. Don't discard those people. Those people need the baptizing of the Holy Ghost. If, if we buy it the church, if the church turns them away, if the church turns out the homosexuals and tells them, you can't come to our church. If we turn out the alcoholics, if we turn away the prostitutes, you can't, you're not, you, our church is too clean, too pretty for you. If we turn, let me tell you, the pimps are going to get them. The pumps are going to get them. Those that's pushing the drugs and pushing prostitution are going to reach out there and get them because they got nowhere to go. Amen. They're looking for something. It's us, honey, they're looking for. 
We got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We got the truth. We got a message that will set them free. Yes. Yes. They, don't need a, they don't need just another preacher. No, no. Shake somebody's hand and say, well, God bless you, brother. Just do the best you can no. and send me some money. Hey, what this world needs. No, this world needs a baptizing yes. in the Spirit. Yes. We, need a, we need a feeling. Just yes. Lord. One black brother, I heard him say, Lord, saturate me with kerosene and sot me on fire. We need a preacher that's looking for something besides a bigger paycheck. We need a preacher that wants something besides another new car or another new truck. We need a preacher that wants a baptizing in the Holy Ghost. That's what this church needs. That's what this apostolic church is hungry for. Jesus said, preach deliverance. Tell them that the captive can be set free. They don't have to be a homosexual anymore. They don't have to be a hooker anymore. They don't have to drink booze anymore. They can be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. New laws and little bitty games ain't going to get the job done. We can pass all kinds of laws and, and we, can, we can outlaw everything that's good and open up everything that's bad and we can do all kinds of junk but he ain't going to do a flip until the church preaches delivered. Washington ain't going to deliver. It ain't going to happen. I think we got a pretty good president. I hope we do. Uh, you know, the lesser of the two evils, my opinion. But he ain't going to deliver them. If they get delivered, it's going to come through the church. It's going to come through the apostolic church. Praise God. Praise God. So how's it get done? Praying until the Holy Ghost fills us. That's how it's going to get done. While a lost generation is speeding toward hell wide open, the church is trying to, many churches are trying to substitute something for the Holy Ghost. It won't work. You can't substitute nothing for the Holy Ghost. You can't substitute games. You can't substitute programs. You can't substitute anything in this world for the Holy Ghost. That's why we got a world sinking in the in the field of sin. That's why we got a world sinking in, in all kinds of field. It makes a difference, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Ghost always lifts up the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost produces holiness. Revival fire began to burn in Ephesus. Whoa! Listen to this, 1919 of Acts. Would you turn over to the Put it on the screen too, Joseph, if you don't mind. 1919 of Acts. The Holy Ghost fire began to burn, Sister Creasy, at Ephesus, and people got delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. Read it for me on the screen. Watch this. This will cause you to have this will cause you to have a house cleaning. This will cause you to clean up some things in your life. Why a lot of people don't want the Holy Ghost? They're afraid they'll have to clean up their act. Read it for me, sweetheart. Many of them. Also to use curious arts. Brought their books together and burn them. Uh -huh. Got rid of it. Yes, uh -huh. What a revival. I bet ex I bet they weren't ready for that. That town wasn't ready for that. Let me tell you something. We get the Holy Ghost fire burning like I think we ought to get it burning. Kilby County may not be ready for it. But it may. It just might. It just might send Daddy back home. I said, I said, it just might make mama come home at night instead of going down at the joint. It might straighten up some attitudes. It's liable to get bitter spirits out. It's liable to get envy and jealousy and strife and hatred and bitter. That's what we need. Bitterness. Hatred. I'm, I'm trying to close it <laughs> Bitterness. Back by gossip. Good Lord, there'll not be gossip in the house of God. If you can't do nothing but gossip, shut up. That ain't nice. But neither is gossip. The very person you're gossiping about, why would be fighting hell? Why would be fight going right through torment as you're speaking? Back by it. That hidden sin. We like to preach against that outside stuff that you can see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, I, I can pick you out, boy. I can pick you out proud. Yeah. Yeah. 
Big old brother Jim, see what I can preach about tonight. I preach against that old long hair. That's what I preach about. We like to preach about this stuff. But what about that hidden sin? What about that sin of, of uh, backbiting? I'm, I'm going to close. I'm, I'm just close. Jealousy. Envy. More dangerous than a ball of booze. Gossip. Backbiting. Pride. Did you know the Bible said pride still goes before destruction? And the Holy Spirit is filled just before uh, a fall. We need the Holy Ghost. Is anybody hungry for the Holy Ghost? That's all it takes. A hunger and a thirst for God. If we are, God fill us. Stand with me. Here's the key right here. I preached all this. I could have went right here the first week. We'd have been gone. Just how willing are we to separate our life from the things of the world? That's the key. Separating ourselves from the things of the world. We have to yield to the baptizer. Not me. If I baptize you in water, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the baptizer in the spirit. Come around the altars, will you? And, and pray with me tonight. Come and pray. Come and pray. What I need is more of you. Lord, I need more of you. Jesus. Come around the front. Let's pray together. Yet I hunger still. Empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. I need more of you.
Still kind of red eyed. Okay, pray for that family. Yes. Pray for Brad and uh, All right. John. The Brad's having a lot of problems, and uh, John is having a lot of problems, and I'm trying my best to help him and pray for him to keep him going the right way. And uh, like I said, there's just a lot of problems going on, and I got my grandson in my house with me now that says he wants to change his life and live for the Lord. <coughs> so I mean, I'm doing everything I possibly can with God's help to help us. Praise God. All right, let's lift our hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you tonight, Lord. God, we have the privilege to pray, Lord, and, and we know that you hear our prayer. We ask God that you touch every need, each one, God, that was spoken, that minister. God, tonight, just having that problem, God, touch him, touch Sister Teresa's need, Lord, and Sister Martha's, Lord, and Aunt Gay, or touch her tonight and Brother Poston. God, move in Jesus' name. God, supply every need. Move tonight, God. Touch Sister Willingham. God, work a miracle. Touch Brother Zavonic's dad tonight, God. Work another miracle there, God. Go with us to our homes. Bring us back, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Thank you. 